Hey guys, Rascal here, and this time on Rascal Reviews, I would like to talk something about a little personal this time. And this is not actually the first time I've done something like this. I actually did a more personal one last year talking about what Voltron Legendary Defender meant to me at the TV show. Well, today, I'm going to do something a little similar. Instead, I actually like to talk about my animation journey. And I know this is going to be probably a little weird, considering I usually talk about particular shows and movies. But this is something I really want to share with you guys, and I want to put out into the universe that this is what I want. It's no secret that I want to create my own animation company and create my own movies and series. And the reason why I want one, why I want to do that, is because I've seen so many bad reboots and bad shows and sequels that have just been spinning out like rapid fire from every company from from D dreamworks well yeah dreamworks has done not so good reboots unfortunately they have some good ones but not but not all of them from cartoon network from disney from, to nickelodeon to warner brothers to universal everyone seems to be just either rehashing the same thing or they're just capitalizing off the existing thing and making more sequels that don't need to be made and there are people that are making original content it's just the problem is that no one seems to really be into them right now or they don't give them attention they want all the focus to be on the existing properties because there's already a given audience there's even a point where they have on netflix where they rejected almost all of craig mccracken's ideas to netflix because they were all original ideas and they only picked Kid Cosmic because they thought it really wasn't much. It was just to get him to stop pitching because he wasn't going to stop. So they just said, okay, we'll do Kid Cosmic. You can do whatever you want with it. And that's it. They didn't bother to promote us. I have some trailers because they felt like it didn't fit with Netflix. And so they just kind of let it run its course and never speaking of, spoken of again. And they only, they said they really only want IPs that exist. They want to do things based off of books, reboots of other shows, spin off of existing properties, uh, the rights to do reboots or stream uh, shows that exist already. They do not want to have original content on their site much anymore, which I think is kind of bad because that was kind of the whole great thing about Netflix is that they had original content mixed in with the stuff that you like but now they don't want that anymore so after years of this I decided at one point I kind of just had enough I want to make my own company to put out the ideas and at first I want my ideas to be pitched to other people but I've seen too many times where great ideas get canceled or tossed away because the, the companies have the rights to them and then the original creators never get those rights back and I think that's a terrible thing to do to a creator so for me I want to make my own company and have my own set of rules so I can distribute the movies that I want to make and the stories I want to tell and I'm really happy that a lot of my Rascal family uh, members my friends and my family are actually supportive of me doing this because I actually started writing some of my ideas down when I was uh, younger, when I, I'll just say that, when I was younger, and I just have them pretty much stored on here, like these were like the base ideas for it, and they're actually, a few of them are actually going to be published this year, so I can't wait for you guys to read them. So when you see these stories, these are the groundworks for what's to come for full-on movies and series don't don't know about streaming service I just know about the company itself or things that come up on TV and I have so many ideas that there's no way I can fit them all in one video if I ever do tell some of my ideas it'll be pretty far into the future once the story's already out and the ideas I have for it being a movie adaptation or a series and so for a few years now and Unfortunately, I have slacked off in some areas because I'm a lot focused on YouTube. And I still love to make my spoofs and my mashups and videos and things, but now I've dedicated part of my time to making the stories that I want to tell in book format. So when you read them, uh, the goal is for you to imagine the stories as movies. So when you're reading it, you can see it playing out in your head as a film with the voices, the sound effects, and everything. And that's kind of how that's kind of how I 
read. That's how I read other people's stories. If it's really, really good, I can sit and imagine it as a film in my head as I'm reading it. I know it sounds kind of weird, but that's just how my mind works. I don't know if anyone else has that, uh, that uh, way of reading, but for me, that's just how I feel when I read it. And if a story is really good, I can see it already mapped out in my head as I'm reading along. As for um, other ones, other ones include multiple um, shows and movies. Like some shows will have various seasons or it's going to be a continuous arc like I do with Rascal Tales. Because Rascal Tales is sort of like, a, you could say it's like a prequel, like prequel adventures to uh, what's to come for my story. Like how you see me make my movies on YouTube is kind of how I make my movies on and I'm going to plan to make all my movies at my company. And, again, I'm really glad to have everyone's support on this because this is something I really would love to do. And I have kept my focus on animation pretty much every day. And not just in watching the stuff I love every day, different animated shows and movies and all the different techniques and styles, but now I also watch lots of videos online that have to do with animation where people talk about the studios behind the movies, the specifically animation studios that make some of these movies, the artists, the background of making the films, where they get the voice talent, how they approach adaptations if they're making them. And for me, it's I'm learning from great masters when it comes to artists, directors, producers, and writers, and how to approach things when it comes to adaptations or reboots or just coming up with an original script. And a lot of them have fantastic advice and I have kept them pretty much on hand every day. Now I haven't watched everything out there. I still watch the fun videos alongside, you know, Rascal family videos. But now a lot of the times I watch those type of videos so I'm constantly getting new information. And I'm also beginning to practice a little more of my artwork to do illustrations for the books. And when these movies and shows come out, um, the goal is that I'm taking Stanley's advice that he has when you're writing a book or a movie or a film and a lot of people have kind of taken this into a whole nother direction when they do it and he said uh, don't write what everyone else is writing because then it won't stand out you write what you know and what you love write the story or the hero that you want to see and put that to paper and in the beginning, that's exactly what people were doing. Stuff that they always wanted to see they never saw on screen or, or in books, they may come about because this is the dream that they wanted. Like if they wanted, all oh, this to say, a superhero that can make food appear out of thin air. That's what they wanted to see. They never saw, so they made it, and it now exists. But a lot of people now kind of take that in a whole other direction, and they just make stuff that only they like and they don't really care if no one else likes it and i mean if the approach was hey this may not be popular with other people but this has got an audience no they seriously make the stuff to please themselves or they reboot things that they know people like and they are not happy that people like them it's like a really weird uh, it's like a really weird outlook on some of the shows and movies when they make reboots and things for it it's just it's just really really odd but for me, I'm making stories that I would want to see and I want everyone else to see. Because I grew up on shows like um, Generator Rex, Ben 10, um, Kim Possible, um, Ju Justice League I saw a little bit later in my life, but I still saw it anyway. You know, T Teen Titans, Shallon Showdown, later on Young Justice. There were just lots of shows that ended up inspiring me. And these were shows that were great at mixing in different genres into one. Like, you would have one that be like an action, comedy, drama, science fiction, which I'm heavily lean towards to when I write. Um, superhero, which is pretty much my number one go-to. You have life lessons from people like Dwayne McDuffie and Stan Lee. And that's what's really missing a lot of the shows now. It's mostly just, um, I don't know, it's just kind of... Not as well thought out. Now, if you want shows that are just fun and you don't have to be so serious all the time, that's perfectly fine. There are lots of shows out there that I love that are just flat-out comedies, and that's it. But even in the comedies, you can tell they're very well-written. It's smart, 
it's really intelligent dialogue sometimes or it's really witty writing and sometimes with the humor is always brilliantly done like when you do references and uh shout outs or uh, references to other movies and shows or other works and it's brilliantly done with the puns i really love when they do puns and they're just really well off the tongue and, and really really clever so for me, the shows and movies I want to tell, whether it be superhero, science fiction, fantasy, um, slice of life, what have you, I want my stories to reach out to others just like the movies that I watched reached out to me. And there are so many shows that have made an impact on me, both when I was little, when I was a teen, and to now. And there's just so many out there, I don't think I could possibly fit them all in one time. There are just so many great, great shows out there that I wouldn't know where to start. So, yes, and so far I think I'm doing pretty well. Again, like I said, some of my stories will actually be made into movies and TV shows. And I am really excited for you guys to see the groundwork for them once they release. Because this will be literally the first seven of them becoming full-on movies. And yes, I'm also thinking about voice actors to have, types of animators, illustrators, background artists, and things to have. And I'm really happy and grateful that all of you are really on board with it with me. Because this is something that I would really love to do and really make an impact with people. Because I know what the recent thing Disney started is, despite the company having movies for everybody... The new people now claim that cartoons are only for kids, animations for kids, and parents and adults just have to suffer through it. The only way you can make an adult cartoon is if you pull, make it R-rated or X-rated, which isn't true. Most people, most adults watch the quote-unquote kids show that you claim that they wouldn't, couldn't bear to watch. So for me, my shows are supposed to be for everybody. My movies are for everybody. It's not so far off the deep end where it's so mature and adult that kids can't watch it. But it's not talking down to anybody to where the adults will feel like, hey, this is really not for me. I really want all my stories and my ideas to reach others, to inspire others. Because when we see great shows like Samurai Jack and Teen Titans and Spider-Man come about, they're inspired by other great works and when you watch those original works that they're inspired by you can see the influences you can see what was taken from there and adapted into their work and that's what I really want for my studio and my ideas and of course I love to hear a few of your ideas you have for uh, shows or movies or books or stuff that you want to see become comic books heck things you want to see become manga what uh, inspired you to write these stories? Was it a, a accumulation of different things or was it one story specifically? Is it something you've had for years? Is it something you came up with recently? Or whatever, I would love to hear it. For me, some stories took a little bit to do and other times they just kind of come into my head. Like it's already done, the name's there, design's there, the story's there, I just gotta write it out. Yeah, I know it's weird. I know it's weird that it's just there because a lot of people have to really build it up and try. But I don't know. For me, most of the time, the stories are just there and the ideas are there. It just suddenly, it's there and then I just write it out. So, you can tell me everything you want to do for animation in the comments below. Do you want a specific skill set to show off when you do it? Do you want to write, produce, anime background voiceover um coloring animating computers or hand-drawn please tell me anything anything have to do with your experience with animation and what inspires you in the comments below thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time later